This video was voted for by patrons of Questions for Science. Homo sapien and Canis familiaris, or more simply, human and dog. We're both mammals, we're both omnivores, and we get along really well. Though a lot of our physiology is similar, there are some major differences. One difference that is the least obvious is our digestive systems. Food goes in, nutrients get absorbed, and waste comes out. You wouldn't think this process is that much different, but evolution being evolution makes differences for species to thrive. The first part of the digestive system is the mouth. The purpose of the mouth is the physical breakdown of food from large pieces into small pieces by the action of chewing. Dogs have 42 teeth in their mouth, whereas humans have 32. Dogs are closely related to wolves who evolved as carnivores, which means they subsisted on hunting their prey, or eating the remains of prey that was already hunted. Their teeth are pointier, leaner, and sharper, to puncture, cut, and tear raw animal tissue. In contrast, humans evolved as omnivores. We were hunter-gatherers that ate both animal tissue and fibrous plant tissue. Our teeth are a mixture of flat and pointy shapes that were able to tear raw animal tissue but also crush and tear plant fibers as well. Also, dogs cannot chew side to side. They can only chew up and down, aiding in the slicing and cutting of tissue. We humans, however, can chew both vertically and horizontally, a trait inherited from omnivores. Also, if you notice, dogs tend to eat their food fairly quickly, despite the size of their food, just a few quick bites, and it's swallowed. Dogs evolved to eat quickly from wolves and can do this because their saliva glands produce a constant excessive amount of saliva. This explains why dogs slobber so much. The excessive saliva lubricates the mouth, esophagus, and food, so it all slides down much easier. However, if the food is too large to slide down the esophagus, the dog will throw it back up. If you've ever seen this, you may have thought your dog was sick or choking on their food. Nope, your pooch is fine. This is natural and is just the dog's body telling it to chew a little more. However, humans cannot do this because it's called bulimia. Speaking of saliva, dogs and humans also have different enzymes in their mouth. For starters, dogs have fewer enzymes in their mouth than humans. This is because in a dog's digestive system, the digestion begins in the stomach. But for humans, digestion begins in the mouth. Salivary enzymes break down complex macromolecules into simpler molecules, like complex sugar into glucose, protein into amino acids, and triglycerides into glycerides and free fatty acids. These reduced molecules are then further broken down and digested in the stomach. And since we're on the topic, let's talk about the stomach. Some people think that the role of the stomach is to absorb nutrients into the body. Not quite. The stomach is where the chemical breakdown of food happens. The mouth is the physical breakdown from large portions into small portions, and early chemical breakdown. But the stomach is where serious molecular breakdown happens into even smaller molecular portions. The stomach does this by using hydrochloric acid, which is excreted by parietal cells on the wall of the stomach. On a scale of acid strength, human gastric acid has a strength of about 2.5 pH, which is very strong. For comparison, nitric acid has a pH of 3, and sulfuric acid has a pH of 2.7. However, the gastric acid in a dog's stomach has a pH of 1.8, making it much stronger than a human's. It takes one half hour for food to move from the stomach to the intestines in humans, but for dogs, it takes up to 12 hours. Again, this is an evolutionary mechanism that dogs inherited from wolves. Unlike a human stomach, a dog's stomach acts as a storage facility that releases energy when it is needed. In the wild, wolves may go for long periods of time without eating, and adapted to this evolutionary pressure by releasing food into the intestines at a much slower rate. When a dog requires more energy, food is shunted from the stomach to the intestines much faster, nutrients are absorbed, and ATP is made for energy production. Finally, the intestines. The intestines absorb nutrients from the food once it's been reduced to individual molecules. Intestinal cells have structures called villi that absorb nutrients into the blood as the converted food passes through the GI tract. The longer the intestine, the longer the absorption takes. For humans, our intestines stretch about 25 feet long. From start to finish, that is from the beginning of the small intestine to the rectum, takes about 20 to 30 hours total. Dogs, however, have much shorter intestines, making their transit time about 6 to 8 hours. Shorter intestinal length is a trait found among carnivores, in order to have a fast turnover of energy production to hunt prey. Despite dogs being omnivorous, they still maintain a predominant amount of carnivorous traits, one specific one being a shorter GI tract. A dog's intestine makes up about 25% of its total GI tract length. In contrast, cats, which are true carnivores, only have about 15% of their GI tract consisting of intestines. 
Finally, after absorption in the intestines, waste is excreted through the excretory system, which I can't exactly show for <clears throat> various reasons. I'll close with this. Despite humans and dogs having very different digestive systems, there are foods that dogs can eat that we eat as well. These foods are watermelon, berries, oatmeal, peanut butter, cheese, eggs, and cooked white rice. However, due to lack of enzymes or difference in digestion time, foods that dogs cannot eat are grapes, onions, garlic, chocolate, and bacon. Bacon is on here because it's abnormally high in fat for dogs and has been known to cause pancreatitis. 